the next consequence of chain rule we're going to look at is something called implicit differentiation. And before doing an example, recall that a circle is not a function. But a circle does, this is the circle of radius 5, centered 0, 0. The circle does satisfy an equation relating x and y. All of the functions we've been taking derivatives of, all of the, uh, yeah, all the functions we've been taking derivatives of, we could isolate y. We could solve for y. But you'll notice if you tried to solve for y, here you would get a positive side and a negative side because this isn't a function. Now, you could, if one of the things, like one of the things we're going to do is find tangent lines, you could split this into two functions, consider those cases, um, but for general relations between x and y where we can't solve for y, uh, that becomes much more difficult, almost impossible. Um, so let's make an observation. Observe. Here. Observe uh, x and y in this circle satisfy a relation. But we can't solve explicitly for y. Meaning we can't make this y equals just one thing. So I'll say, but we can't solve this explicitly for y. Meaning we can't make it y equals just one thing. But what we can do, but we can say what? y is defined implicitly in terms of x. y is related to x somehow. It's not explicitly given by x, by something with x's. That's explicitly. That's not a capital H there. But we can say y is defined implicitly in terms of x. It's defined implicitly. It's not explicitly solved in terms of x, but it is related to x. And when that happens, when we have an equation with x's and y's, or we can't solve for y, we can still take the derivative um, by using a chain rule. Uh, a chain rule observation, I should say. So let's look at this example. Example. Find dy dx for this curve. Um, so th this example is going to illustrate how we can take the derivative of something where y is defined implicitly in terms of x. And it's called um, this process we're going through is called implicit differentiation. Well, what we can do is differentiate this uh, equation with respect to x. And what do we get? Well, differentiate x squared with respect to x, you get just 2x. Derivative is taken normally. But how about y squared? Well, as a side observation, how would you take the derivative of, uh, I don't know, 5x to the 4 plus 7x, all squared? How would you take the derivative? Well, you would do 2 of them to the first, and then times, in this case, 20x cubed plus 7. So 2 of them to the first times the derivative of the inside. We can think of this y as being the same type of thing. This y can be thought of as some quantity with a bunch of x's inside. Meaning the derivative would then be given by power rule 2y, but then you need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. And I'll put the multiplication dot there. 25 is constant, so that doesn't change as x is changing. So we get a 0. 
I mean, I'll remark, this is by a chain rule result. I'll just say by chain rule. So we can think of that y as having a bunch of x's inside. You know, a, a summary of what we're doing is take the derivatives of everything as you would expect, and then whenever you have a y, throw a dy dx on it by chain rule. Well, our goal is to find dy dx. Look at that. dy dx is right there. So we have to solve for it. So 2y dy dx is negative 2x divided by 2y. dy dx equals negative x over y. Um, so how can we use this? Uh, am I going to have room on this board? Probably not. How can we use this? Well, before using it, I'll just remark. You know, dy dx, some students don't like all that writing. Um, when I took Calc 1, um, I didn't like that writing. I liked the prime notation because it was less writing. Um, so you can use the other notation if you want. Alternative notation it would look like 2x plus 2y, y prime equals 0, solve for y prime. Um, I like the fractional notation now because it kind of makes everything pop out. Well, it makes what's important pop out. And especially in one where we're going to have like three of them. Um, so what can we do with this? Well, maybe I shouldn't have erased that circle. No, oh, that's okay. Circle's easy enough to draw again. That first circle is a lousy circle anyway. Well, what can we do with it? Well, we know we can use derivatives to find slopes at a given point. So we can use this to find tangent lines. So find equations for all lines I wrote tines. Uh, I was thinking of the word tangent when I wrote lines. Lines tangent to the curve x squared plus y squared equals 25 when x equals, what did I write here, 3. So find equations for all lines tangent to this curve when x equals 3. Well, we need point and slope again. Um, I'm going to erase everything but dy dx. We need point and slope. Well, point x equals 3. What happens if x equals 3? Well, we need the y value. But here we need all y values. So here we're going to have two different y values. And because of that, we're going to have two different uh, tangent lines that we need the uh, equations for. So we have the point 3, 4. And we have a corresponding slope. I'm going to write the one on this board and then this, the equation underneath it. I'm going to write the other on this board. So x equals 3, y could equal 4 or negative 4. And now we need slope for each one. Well, the slope is given by that equation. When x equals 3, y equals 4. So negative x over y equals negative 3 over 4 in this case. So an equation would be y minus 4 is negative 3 fourths x minus 3. Over here the slope negative 3 over negative 4. So it's negative x over y. Negative x over y gives us positive 3 fourths. So we have y plus 4 equals 3 fourths of x minus 3. 
So we have two tangent lines, and that is expected because, uh, well, what does the circle look like? Well, the circle looks like this. When x equals 3, you have this tangent line up here, or you have this, well, and you have that tangent line down there when x equals 3. So we did get two slopes, or uh, two lines, um, and we found the two points by using the equation. Um, so let's look at two more examples where we use this uh, implicit differentiation technique for more complicated functions. Now, because this one, if you had to, you could have solved this for y, gotten two different equations, and gone from there. So find dy dx here, or y prime if you prefer, uh, for x to the fifth plus tangent of y equals y squared plus 3. So again, we're going to differentiate with respect to x, and in doing that, dy dx's are going to pop out. So differentiate with respect to x, 20x to the 4. Here, we are thinking of y as having a bunch of x's inside of it. So we have tangent of a lot of x's. Derivative of tangent is secant squared, but then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. Again, this is showing up by the chain rule. On the right side, we have a y squared. Derivative is 2y. Again, multiply by the derivative on the inside. Y, we are thinking of y as having lots of x's inside it. And then derivative of 3 is 0. 3 is a constant. With respect to x, that doesn't change. And now, we need to find dy dx. Well, there's a dy dx, there's a dy dx. How would you solve this equation for x? Not that equation. How would you solve uh, How would you solve this equation for x? Well, that has an x, that has an x. You can put them together and divide by their coefficient. We can do the same thing here. We're looking to solve for dy dx. There's a dy dx. There's a dy dx. Let's put them together. So we have 20 x to the fourth. Let's put them together on the right side of the equal sign equals 2y dy dx subtract secant squared of y dy dx. Now how do we solve for dy dx? Well, notice over here we would have 7x minus 3x. To make that 4x, you technically apply the distributive property. Factor out an x. But we can do the same thing here. Factor out a dy dx. Each term has a dy dx. Each term has a dy dx. Factor out a dy dx. And now we can divide everything by the coefficient on dy dx. So dy dx equals what? 20x to the 4 over 2y minus secant squared of y. So here, um, we had to do a little extra algebra to solve for dy dx, but combine everything with dy dx, factor out dy dx, divide by the coefficient. Debating which of these I want to do next.
Uh, let's do this one. Find dy dx. Sine of x squared y to the fifth equals 1 over x plus 1 over y. Well, we do the same thing. Differentiate with respect to x. And what do we get? Well, on the left side, we have a sine function. Derivative of a sine function is a cosine function. But then you multiply by the derivative on the inside. Oh, in this previous one, notice the only times dy dx has showed up were when we were taking derivatives of things with y. When we took derivatives of x's, dy dx didn't show up. It's just when we take derivatives of y. That's the application of chain rule we're using. So here in this first piece, we didn't take the derivative of anything with y. We took the derivative of a sine function. So the derivative is a cosine function. But now, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which requires a product rule. So we have x squared y to the fifth product rule, derivative of x squared, 2x, leave the second alone, plus x squared, derivative of y to the fifth, with respect to x, 5y to the fourth. But we're taking the derivative of something with y, so we need a dy dx. The only time a dy dx shows up is when we take the derivative of something with y. And the only time that happened on the left side of the equal sign was when going from y to the fifth to 5y to the fourth. What about the right side of the equal sign? Well, we have 1 over x. You could do, you know, x to the negative 1, so negative x to the negative 2. Um, I'm going to use the fraction shortcut observation that I made a couple weeks ago. Derivative 1 over x, negative 1 over x squared. Derivative 1 over y is also negative 1 over y squared. But now you need a dy dx. You need a dy dx every time you take the derivative of something with y's with respect to x. Well, great. How do we solve for dy dx? Well, you could do it in one step here, but I'm going to distribute this through first so this dy dx is separated. So what do we get? Distribute this through 2xy to the fifth cosine x squared y to the fifth plus 5x squared y to the fourth cosine of x squared y to the fifth dy dx. So what, how did we get that? Well, we just distributed the cosine onto each piece. This thing times cosine, this thing times cosine equals negative 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared dy dx. Now solve for dy dx. Um, what I'm going to do, we need to put all the dy dx's together. And we need to put all the non-dy dx's together. Now if you solve this equation, if you solve that equation, you put the 2 and the 4 together, you put the 3x and the 5x together. Doing the same thing here. So put them all together, factor out dy dx, divide, and what do we get? So dy dx, um, I'm going to put this on that side, equals what? Negative 5x squared y to the fourth cosine of x squared y to the fifth minus 1 over y squared. No, made a mistake. Um, I didn't divide, I did it backwards. 
move those to the other side, move this to this side, factor out dy dx and divide by the coefficient of dy dx. So we get 2xy to the fifth cosine of x squared y to the fifth plus 1 over x squared. And all of this is over 5x squared y to the fourth cosine of x squared y to the fifth. Uh, that's on the other side, so we need a negative on that. Minus 1 over y squared. Um, so when you're doing these, um, you know, you do them enough times, you get used to the algebra. But if you don't see this in one step, then write it out. Bring this to that side. Bring this over here. Factor out a dy dx. Divide by the coefficient. Maybe I'll also underline this positive sign there. Um, and you don't have to simplify the negative or fractions on fractions. That's fine by me here. Um, so remember when doing these, every time you take the derivative of something with y, a dy dx pops up by chain rule. 